Today we're going to be talking about the Kodak PixPro FZ45 digital camera. I just bought this camera, uh, let's see, last week. I'm a big fan of Kodak cameras for their price point. They're some of the better cameras available. And they're also one of the few major manufacturers still making point and shoot cameras today in 2023. So I just pulled it out of the box a few days ago. I've already taken some pictures and video with it. And this video is gonna go over some of the good features that I like about this camera, as well as some limiting features. I've been buying and selling cameras now for the last 15 years. And as such, I've seen many hundreds and thousands of cameras. So we're gonna kind of put it through the test, the prickly pear camera test and see how it turns out. So this camera has a 4X optical zoom, an equivalent 27 millimeter wide angle lens, and it uses AA batteries, which were included. It did not come with an SD memory card, so I went ahead and threw in a four gig card. And one of the things that I did when I first got this camera was I pulled out a couple other similar Kodak cameras that have been released in the last few years just to see the difference in build quality, feel, and size. And I've got those cameras here. So here we have the Kodak PixPro FC45, which is the camera that we're talking about. And we also have the Kodak PixPro FZ152, which was released a number of years ago. You can see the size difference. This camera's, oh, about 30% larger, I would say. Well, there's a few differences between these two cameras. The main difference between these two cameras is that this FZ45 has a 4X optical zoom. The FZ152 has a 15X optical zoom. So what that means is when you turn both of these cameras on, you'll see that when I zoom out with the FZ152, it has a 15X optical zoom. So if you're taking longer distance shots or you're taking sports photography, sometimes it's kind of, or nature, it's kind of handy to have a longer zoom, but this camera is also 30 or $40 more when it was originally released. So there is a price difference. The other difference between these two cameras is that this FC152 with the bigger optical zoom actually utilizes a rechargeable lithium ion battery, which may or may not be helpful for you. I find it kind of handy, especially if you're traveling, just to have a camera that uses AA batteries like the FC45. That way, if you run out of batteries, you can just pop in two AA's if you don't have a rechargeable battery available. The last codec that we're gonna be talking about is a big, bigger camera. You can see the substantial size difference between these three cameras. I'll line them up here for you. So we've got the FC152, the FC45 that we're talking about, and this big guy here is the Kodak Z5010, which was released, oh, I think at least six or seven years ago now. This camera also uses AA batteries, and it has a 21X optical zoom. So this is gonna zoom out even more. The LCD screen is also a little bit larger. the 21x optical zoom this is almost a bridge camera and a bridge camera is basically a that's why they call it a bridge it's a bridge between the point and shoot like these two and a, a generally a DSLR camera that has interchangeable lenses one of the downsides to a larger camera like this Kodak Z5010 even though it uses AA batteries I found that it's quite power hungry and it goes through the batteries at a pretty fast rate the other issue that I've seen with the Kodak Z5010 and larger bridge cameras by Kodak is because they are power hungry. I often see a lot of battery corrosion in the battery compartment. So if you're looking to buy any, really any camera that uses AA batteries, what I would do prior to purchase is just make sure that the AA battery compartment is clean. Okay, let's put these two away for now. And we're gonna go back to our FC45, which is why we're here and what we're talking about. Okay, so we've got the FC45 here with the SD card inside of it. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. And at the full 16 megapixel resolution of this camera, an eight gig card will hold about 1500 pictures, which is pretty good. Here's a picture of the LCD screen, or video of the LCD screen. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a picture real quick. That's without the flash. And in auto mode, it's gonna be auto set. If you need to use the flash, the flash is gonna be, it's right here. 
and it will automatically fire if you're in auto mode, if it needs to fire. So if you're in an indoor situation shooting with a lot, with not very much natural light, oftentimes the flash will pop up and fire. And this camera is really, what I've noticed taking pictures with it, is definitely struggles if you have it in a manual mode and you're not using the flash indoors. This camera loves natural light. Or like I am here, I have quite a few studio lights, so it actually shoots okay without the flash on. So I have a picture without the flash, and now I'm gonna manually fire. It's called force flash in the Kodak. And see, it didn't need to use the flash, so it, the picture ended up kind of washed out. So the zoom on this camera is going to be indicated by the W and the T here, W and T. Play button is going to indicate playback of either videos or pictures. On the side of the camera is a USB port for the USB cable that is included. So if you needed to hook up your camera to the computer, you can do so using that. Um, it won't recharge using that port. I don't think even with rechargeable AA batteries. You could use rechargeable AA batteries in this camera if you have them available. One helpful tip I would give you about using batteries in this camera is don't use the dollar store batteries. They, they really can't even power on most electronics that are power hungry like this camera. What I prefer to use are either name brand batteries like Duracell or Energizer, but I've also found really good deals on Amazon, especially buying in quantity. Because I use so many cameras, I buy the 300 pack of AA batteries on Amazon, and it works out to about 20 cents a battery. This camera uses two AA batteries, so that would be about 40 cents. And each set of AA batteries, depending on what mode you're in, is going to last you two to 300 pictures. If you're using the flash, maybe slightly less than that. If you wanted to change the mode in this camera, all you need to do is go down here and click mode, and then you can toggle through. Oop. Hit mode, and then you can toggle through your options here. Uh, nope, I'm toggling. Okay, so out of the box, it's gonna be set as auto mode. If you let go, it'll apparently do it really quick. Auto, program AE, manual. Stop that. Movie mode, scene mode, panorama mode. So if you wanted to stitch multiple images together, you can do that using panorama mode and you just rotate the camera when you're taking the picture. And it will stitch multiple pictures together into one pretty seamless picture. Especially if you're printing out a larger print, that can be kind of handy. Face beautifier. Hmm. I could use that, taking a picture of myself, and we're back to auto mode. So a lot of the times it's easiest to use an auto mode as the camera will automatically change the, seat, the aperture and ISO and flash, depending on your needs, which is pretty handy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick video, and we'll take a video of our, my other Kodak Fix Pro here. And go to movie mode. There we go. So in movie mode, it has four different options. It has normal, which is what it's set to out of the box. It has vivid. It has black and white. And it has sepia, which is largely gray, brownish tones. Kind of gives it an antique or a vintage look. So I'm going to film one in sepia. A quick little movie mode, a movie in sepia, and then I'm going to film one in normal, and you'll get an idea of what type of video this shoots. So we're going to do normal first. To start the video, all you have to do is hit that top shutter button when you're in movie mode. You'll hear a click, and it'll start. Why? Now the big question is why? Why would you want this camera? Well, I see this camera serving multiple purposes. If you already have a DSLR camera or a phone, and you want something dedicated to taking pictures, this is a really good option for you. It slips into a pocket really easy. Um, it takes good quality pictures, uses AA batteries, which is really handy. And honestly, 
digicams, which is what these are, are called these days by the younger generation, are really kind of coming back into style. It gives your pictures more of a vintage picture look than the super HD quality that a lot of the camera phones provide now. This, because it does have a 4x optical zoom, is going to give you a little bit better zoom than most uh, phone cameras. Another great option for this is for someone for their first digital camera. And it makes it super easy to, to either film short video clips or take pictures because it's got a pretty simplistic and basic menu that's very easy to understand. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, uh, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more camera content.